Three, two, one. We clap. <laughs> Three, two, one. Right, yo, what's up everybody? It's Cam and Vicky. This is year four. Year four. Year four of the annual. Give it up for us. The annual question and answer. And so what we asked you all to do was to comment on the picture and let us know what questions that you guys had. We have a lot of questions because we posted it on my social media, on her social media, yeah. on the Life with the Logans channel, and on her uh, personal channel. So We won't get to all of them, but we'll get through the ones that were most liked. If we didn't like your question, I'm sorry. A lot of these questions were already answered. Um, so if you haven't seen the other three videos that we've already done, Make sure you go watch those because we're not answering any questions that we've already answered. How did you know he was the one? When did we meet? How old were we when we got married? Are we going to have babies? All those questions have already been answered, so we're not answering those again. Like she said, be sure to check out the previous videos for some I'll of link those, them in the description uh, box. foundational questions that you all may have asked. Uh, this is from Circa underscore 09. When you got married, what was it like adapting to living with one another and sharing space? And how do you console one another when the other is down and doesn't want to be vulnerable? I'll let you go first. Um, I feel like we've already answered this. Probably. Yeah, we talked about this already because you talked about how I use your brush. <laughs> like I've said before, I don't think the hard part is getting used to being around you. Because I'm used to being around guys because I had brothers and a dad. So I know what it's like to live with, with men. The hard part for me was adulting and learning how to adult together. And I think that's what's been the difficult part, being responsible for the house that we live in. Because before we were living with our families where they were, our parents were responsible. So now it's like living together, we have to learn how to be responsible together. It's kind of just like learning how to balance, you know, balance the money in the house, how who does what, um, you know, who takes care of what. And really it's just like figuring out where each other where we're, not, where we're weak and being stronger for each other in those areas. Other than that, I mean, this is your typical frustrations. Like, I use this hairbrush. I don't use your hairbrush anymore. Huh. <laughs> but now, but the other day, I confessed that I used his toothbrush a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, I had it on my Insta story. But I, I confessed, I couldn't hold it in. I was like, babe, I'm sorry. I, I gotta be How honest. How did you slip you. up and use somebody's toothbrush? Cause we just, it's more than you still got crust in your eyes and then you go reach for your toothbrush and you just no. grab it and you start brushing and Ain't you don't no be thinking. Ain't no crust that thick that I can't I, see Okay, well then, and both of our toothbrushes are blue. So it's kind of hard to tell. Nah, like nah. sometimes you just be in the I've zone. I've never used anyone else's toothbrush. I'd rather walk well, around with stank breath. Your toothbrush has only been in the same cup with somebody else's toothbrush since we've been married. So you may have used my toothbrush and didn't even know. No. <laughs> well, anyway, but it's just those little things. But those things aren't really like tough. It's really the the adulting part that's the difficult part. How do you console one another when the other one is down and doesn't want to be vulnerable? Um, early on, in the beginning of our marriage, I would try to like fix it. Like, what can I do? Like, I need to fix it now. But then, you know, as you get older and as you grow older in wisdom and you talk to other married men and your fathers and, you know, different things like that, you, you grow to just try to understand where they're coming from and just be cool with that um, and, and seeing how you can be there to support them as opposed to just trying to fix it. Because cause me, I, like, I, I'm, I'm a fixer, dog. Like, <laughs> If something is going on and if you're going through something, like I want to know what it is. I want to know who did it because we can box. <laughs> and I want to know who I need to fight. I want to I want to know where Catch I need to go. Um, you know, now it's like, okay, what's going on? Like, why do you feel that way? Man, like, what can I do to, you know, to support you? Is there anything you want me to do? Or you want to just watch Netflix? Okay, we can, you know, you want to just chill here? Or do you just want to vent? If that's all you want to do is just vent? I'm a great listener. Let's sit down and yeah, you can vent. That's how that's how I've handled it. Okay. <laughs> From Dope Hugs. Do you think it's okay for your spouse to use terms of endearment on other people, friends of opposite se op opposite sex, such as baby, sweets, or even endearing emojis? I would really love to know your take on this because it has been a question on my heart for so long and no one has been transparent enough to answer. God bless you. <clears throat> You want me to answer that? Mm -hmm. 
So, okay, there's a difference between terms of endearment and just being like, just joking. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know when somebody really trying to say something and be cute and when they actually just being them. I'll give you an, an uh, example. Cause Cam does this grandma voice where he talks like a grandma sometimes and he calls somebody baby. In a grandma voice, baby is anybody, honey. You, your, your dog can be baby. I think you kind of have to use discernment on that one, just because it it depends on the situation. Yeah, like like, like so. Like so certain say, people, certain people do that with everyone. Like Nicole. Like Nicole and DK. Yeah. DK calls every girl. I, every girl he hugs, he says, "Hey, what's up, baby?" Like he doesn't mean it like. I want you. Yeah, because the first time he said it to me, I was like, wait, what? But then I heard him say it to like every other girl in the room. Right. I was like, oh, okay. But if it's directed at you in a way that's like, you you can feel, even if, okay, so even if he doesn't mean it that way, and you feel some type of way as, your, as their spouse, you should still say something. Right. Regardless of if they meant it or not, how you felt and how you took it, matters because then it's going to start something in you and you're going to be mad and he ain't going to know why right off the bat like hey i don't like when you said that or please explain to me what that is because when i first met cam he had a lot of girls that were friends him and nicole they y'all call each other bff or whatever because i didn't know who she was it was kind of like <laughs> Excuse me, like I'm your best friend. What you mean? So I had to really get to know Nicole to know what that meant to her and to him. If at any point you feel uncomfortable, you should say something. Like when we first got married, like uh, there was an incident where I had used a term of endearment or an emoji with uh, a girl, and she was upset about it. If that makes her uncomfortable, um, you gotta—I mean, you just gotta stop doing it. You gotta change, like. It is what it is, as Gigi's over there scratching, making noise. Yes, yeah, she wants some water. So yeah, you're not in this relationship alone. Exactly. So you should always um, take into consideration your spouse's feelings. And don't take that as an opportunity to start yelling and screaming and cussing him out. Like, if he don't know, he don't know. So you gotta give him that grace period. Right. Like, hey babe, I saw this, now it upset me. In a calm, calm voice when we had that little situation it took me a long time it took me like two weeks to get there because at first i was pissed but it was my fault so i didn't want to say nothing because i went through his phone and then i threw it and i got mad and i that, like two days later i had to like really get myself together because i'm like how do i approach this like do i go basketball lives or yep. you know do i calm down first i had to really take some time to calm down to get through that and after you know and it took time to myself i'm asking her every day and, like because i'm you, yeah if you if you know you know, the person that you love, like, I spotted it immediately, and I'm like, what's wrong? Yeah, it took me you like two weeks. Like, every day I'm asking, like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? I talked to my dad, I'm like, dad, like, she not talk. I mean, something, something happened, I don't know. She ain't telling me she not talking. Talk to her, man, just shut everything down and just, you know, figure out what it is, and y'all yep. can work through it. And then I was like, came in the house, turned the TV off, and we just sat on the couch for like for an hour. hour. <laughs> I'm this like, is back when I didn't talk. This is year one. I talk now. Year yeah, one. I'm year like, one. man, what's going on? And I was just like, like, you ain't talking to me. Like, you ain't talked to me a whole week. You know, walking around with this little attitude. I'm like, what's wrong? Nothing. And every time they're saying nothing, they're getting more, more mad. But it really wasn't even that I didn't want to talk about it. It was that I didn't know how to say it. Like, I didn't know how to verbalize. Like, I didn't know how to bring it up. <laughs> He's leaving his work phone in my car. So I devised this plan where I would you know, leave the house and come back and I would just have his phone and be like, hey, let me just holla at you real quick about this. So that's what I did. But it took me a while to get there. And it was dumb. I should have just said something when I first saw it, but I just was in my feelings. So dope hugs, that's a great um, question. And that was a moment for us to be transparent about our first and like real only argument. It wasn't even really an argument. It but was, that was like the that was like the first that yeah, was our first uh, experience of conflict with, yeah. with each other. So, honey underscore blossoms. How has your relationship with God gotten stronger since you've been married? And what are some what are some ways that you use to keep God first in your relationship? So I'll go first. Um, so over the years, through these four years, we've gotten uh, closer together uh, to God um, as well as individually. Uh, both of us growing up in church, of course, you have a strong understanding of who God is, yeah. right? But you have to also know who God is for, for yourself. yourself. In the, the beginning of our marriage, I never wanted to be like, 
you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that. Because I'm very engaged, I'm very involved in the church and a lot of different ministries in the church. Um, I always felt like, you know, it's gotta be organic. Like, it's, you've gotta want this. I know she loves God, but I'm not gonna be up here like, this is what you need to do. You need to be, uh, like, I, I was never gonna be like that. I always like to, to think of myself like Matthew 15 is, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So if I'm living right, folks that, that look up to me, my influence and my impact, folks are gonna wanna do the same things that I'm doing. So eventually over time, and now, you know, she's very engaged, she helps me out uh, in youth ministry, she serves alongside me. Uh, she's, you know, got some ideas and things that she's bringing to the table. And then another thing that we've done is um, we we do a lot of Bible plans together now. Y'all been asking me, Cam, what Bible plan y'all doing? What Bible plan y'all doing? I mean, holding out because I want us to finish the plan first. Right? Can we do them first? You know, this is between us right now. Right. I'm gonna let y'all know when we finish. And I'm gonna I, let you know. The problem for me growing up was that everything I did was in front of everyone. It, it felt like it was always on display and I couldn't grow in that area. I didn't want to do what everybody expected me to do, which is like kind of low-key rebellious I, when I was growing <laughs> up. I, I mean, that's kind of how it was. Like I, I low-key didn't want to do what I was supposed to do because I knew people expected me to do it. When we got married was actually, actually before we got married, Cam encouraged me to develop my relationship with God or whatever. And I, you know, it took me some time, um, especially moving here and that being my first time being in a traditional kind of church environment since I was like a kid. I had to really develop my own, figure out who I was in God first. My dad told me to find my secret place. So I was finding my secret place and just me and God was in there and we was just doing this right here. And then after I got to a point where I was comfortable enough, now I can, you know, talk about it on camera. Now I can talk about it in front of people. Now I can talk about it with my husband, which, you know, it sounds bad, but everybody has their own pace that they move at. Like you can't force people into the same situation that you're in. So right. everybody moves at their own pace. And um, he never tried to push me to do anything. Cause people try to make you do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like um, you should do this. You should do that. It's just kind of like, uh, let me get there first, okay? Yeah, and it, it pushes you. It pushes that individual like further away. Right. It's like now so, they're like, I'm not, I'm not gonna do what you tell them. Like, yeah. Forward, you know what I'm saying? Like it, 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 it creates a bad taste. Um, how do you handle situations where you were expecting to have a goal reached by a certain time, but God's timing took over and shifted your personal timeline? So, so for me, I'm a roll with the punches kind of dude. Um, I'm very like go with the flow. You know, the Bible says many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is always God's the purpose. Lord's purpose that prevails. You know that scripture, but then as soon as it's time to apply it, you're right. kind of like, Ugh. but this is what I want. <laughs> many times I'm, I'm thinking like, as soon as I got ordained as a youth pastor uh, three years ago now, I'm like, yeah, you know, Full time. I can, I can come <laughs> off my job now. And, <laughs> Three years later, I'm still working there. It's always, everything is always in God's timing. When it's time for me to come off, come off my job and go full-time ministry, I'll be more prepared, I'll be more ready for it, so. I've always been a roll the punches kind of person too, but what messes me up is people make you feel like you should be doing more or have more or whatever. Like, what's for you is for you. Especially being on the internet, people like, try to push you to into a certain place where you're not at yet and it's like okay i'm not a failure because i haven't reached that yet you're just eager mcbeaver and you need to sit down but <laughs> you know that's just how it be sometimes you kind of just got to be like you know what it's really not my plan anyway it's god's plan god's plan miss yinko i don't know if that's how you say it says uh Long what do you forward. What do y'all do to keep the fire burning for each other in marriage? What are some practical steps to maintaining love, playfulness, and flavor? And also, any tips or list of 10 must-haves to keep love fresh? I get this question so often and I really don't understand how to answer this because I actually like my husband, so I don't have to like try to like him. Like people be like, how do you keep the fire burning? I like you, so. I just get a fresh get cut. Get a fresh cut on Friday. Come home, like today, I came home and she Fresh was wax like, Friday, Ooh. you know? That's pretty much it. I we, don't. We date weekly. I think when you prioritize the little things, like dating, dating means that I'm continuing to pursue you, although I already have you. 
Ooh, that Ooh. was good. Yes. And yes. I didn't steal that from nobody. So okay. because I'm showing you that you're still important and I still want to continue to chase, to, to continue to show you how much, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm valuing you as a part of my life, that makes your spouse feel loved and feel you know wanted and feel secure so once a woman feels all of those things wanted secure and and loved i mean you already you already doing great brother and and as long as a woman is making the guy feel like you know uh, he's trustworthy and and she's stroking his ego and she's supporting him he like man i got i got everything i need carve out time once a week Carve out time once a week where you just spend time with your just wife. Kick it. You know, go I to mean, the movies. Go to dinner. You know, gotta be nothing fancy. Stay at home and watch Netflix. Cook each other dinner. Clean up the kitchen. Wipe the stove down. Come on, somebody. Wipe I wipe the stove. I wiped the stove down and, and had that joint shining. I went to work. She came home the next Listen. day. The dishes was in the dishwasher. Oh! Huh? The kitchen floors were shining. Come on, somebody. The sink was empty. When you begin to do those types of things for the woman that you love, God will begin to pour you out <laughs> a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Come <sighs> on. To me, those things start when y'all dating. Like, you got to know if the dude is hyping you up because he trying to get some or if he hyping it up because he actually likes you. Because if he actually likes you and cares about you, he'll continue to do that when y'all get married. Like, it won't stop after he gets you. You got to know people's intentions. So... Yeah. Before you get married, know the person's intentions. Why are y'all together? Do y'all actually like each other? Do you like to be around him? Does he make you laugh or are you just laughing at his jokes because he cute? Like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Cam, this is for you. Do you believe once a cheater, always a cheater? And or over time, can a man change? What does that have to, like, are you saying, I'm a very detail oriented person. Like, are you saying once a cheater, always a cheater in marriage? Like your husband cheated on you? Or, I mean, because, like, I need some context. Okay, know? so we're going to say for the sake of this video, because we're married, if your spouse cheats on you, is it is once a cheater, always a cheater? Does that apply? I can't say. I don't I don't know. Do you believe a man can change was the question. Now, that part, everybody, said, anybody can change. Over time, can a man change? Over time, can a woman change? Absolutely. Anybody can change. Anybody can change. So... How has y'all routine changed since the first year of marriage to the fourth year? All right, so first year of marriage, um, we had a lot less responsibility. Oh yeah. We, we <laughs> lived in a, a condo. We live in a condo now, but we're- We were renting we're it. We're homeowners now. Yeah. Uh, we were renting then. And uh, it was crazy. We didn't, have, we didn't have a whole bunch of stuff. We had, you know, I'm just be real with y'all. We had two vehicles that were paid for Right. We didn't have no car note, so we just really had rent, utilities. Yep, that was it. That was it. Gas. You know, now uh, we got two car notes. We got, you know, a mortgage. Oh, Jesus. We got bills to pay, you yeah. know. Um, so we are we are uh, uh, a hardworking husband and wife team, as well as ministry, as well as On top of that, yeah. staying I mean, fit, as well as, you know, me working my normal full-time job that... It's kind of taxing because I'm driving back and forth, uh, commuting about two hour, two and a half hours a day during the week, uh, as well as being at church uh, during the week. Three so times a week. Rehearsals, prayer, well, you're, meetings, you're three times a week. as well as if we have speaking engagements, if she has speaking engagements, I can't talk today. Um, so, it's yeah, a lot. We have things, a lot things have definitely now. changed. You know, definitely. we have a dog. Now that we have to take care of everything we do, we have to consider, man, we can't leave Gigi that long. <laughs> right. Uh. How did you guys set physical limits when courting so you didn't have sex? Um, we didn't set physical limits. Like halfway through us dating is when I read Heather Lindsay's book. When I read that book, she talked about her boundaries and the boundaries that she set. And she said, you know, that um, they didn't hold hands, they didn't kiss or whatever. And so, that started a wave of people who were like, I'm not gonna hold hands, I'm not gonna kiss, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do that. And me and Cam were like, I'm, I'm not doing that because we didn't want to. So you don't have to look at somebody else's life and somebody else's boundaries that they set, look at what they did and copy that 
and think that that's gonna work for you because it might not. Some people's boundaries may be too much for you. Some people's boundaries may not be enough for you. You may need more boundaries. Do whatever it is that you need to do to make sure that you make the right choices because if you put yourself in a position to compromise, you're going to compromise. So-and-so did this so I can do that too. No, that does not mean that. So yeah, that's the reality of it. It's like you gotta make your own, you gotta figure out what it is that you need to do. Be honest with yourself. And when you're dating somebody and recording someone and you wanna set boundaries, set those boundaries and be honest about it. Like if y'all come to a point where you have to talk about that, talk about it and be honest. Do you have anything to say? Totally agree. Now that you guys have been married for some time, what is one major change that you have noticed about each other? I mean, I, I would say you're a lot more spiritual now. Openly, yes. I'm a lot more open in general. Yeah, see, that's the thing, like, where people, people were asking, like, can, can people change? Like, everyone changes. I've changed a lot. I'm not the same person at all. When we first got married, I was way different. Now. People change. People But evolve. women, people women change all the time. I think men, men are a little, they don't change as much because men are kind of like, they're not as we're, emotional we're very, openly. We're very you know? concrete. We're very yeah, they're, yeah. logistic and, and logical. At the core of who we are, we're the, we're the same. We're the same, but we've just grown and mm -hmm. we've, we've evolved and we've matured. Or as my dad would say, matured. Matured. That's what you want in, in, in a spouse. Like you want someone who's gonna grow you want someone who's going to evolve. You want someone who's going to continue to, you know, take themselves to the next level. You don't want someone who's just going to be okay with being where they are. Cam has grown a lot in in that he's he's just more, I don't know, um, I don't know. He talks more. I guess. I I mean I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but you've grown a lot though. How have you grown? Assess yourself. That's not what the question was. I know. I can't really pinpoint it. Well, he's gotten finer every year, so there's that. I don't know. I just feel like you've become more assertive for some reason, even though you've always been kind of assertive. I don't know. I just feel like now you're like stronger in your decisions. That's what I tell people on the court. I'm a grown man. Oh my gosh. How do you feel like you've grown? Because I, I really can't pinpoint it. I just know that you've That's grown. That's fine. We don't have to force it. I'm forcing it. How do you maintain healthy relationships with friends outside of having a happy marriage? I understand it's important to have a comfortable balance between the two, but it's so easy to drift away or not make time for both. I think, I mean, I think it's very important to have friends because you want to have individuals who are like in the same arena as you. Mm -hmm. We already know today the culture has shifted in such a way that um, family isn't as valued as it once was. And friendships too. Uh, and friendships have changed. Uh, social media has um, caused a lot of things to shift and change um, due to the culture. So you have to, you know, you definitely have to embrace um, that you need like-minded people around you. The old saying is it takes a village to raise um, someone. So you have to have your village you never want to find yourself in a scenario where you're spending time with individuals but you truly don't know their motives you truly don't know their goals um you know spend as much time as you can together without um invading each other's space you know maybe y'all get together once a month or whatever the case may be you all you have to figure out your sequence you have to figure out what's good for you all even in marriage like how much time should you spend together that that kind of question is like well, it depends on the situation. It depends on how much time you can spend together. Um, Cause some friends we may see once a month. Some friends we may see, you know, every other week cause we go to church together. It just depends on the situation. You know, we keep different people around us in different areas of our lives. You know, there's like people you work with, there's people you go to church with, there's people, I have friends online cause all my friends are long distance. So it's kind of like, you know, you have to make time in ways that you can, but just know that nothing comes before your marriage. So, you know, that balance should never take away from your time that you spend with your spouse. And then the next question is friendship related to it also says, um, as a couple, how do you deal with broken friendship or conflict with the people in your inner circle? It's tough, um, but you just try to, you know, be there for uh, those individuals as best you can. You need to, there needs to be constant communication. That's with any relationship. Communication is the key of all keys. It's the keyest of all keys. Um, it's a major key. Like you, you 
close the door to getting help, getting prayer, you know, having people, you know, lean, having people to lean on, having people to support you if you don't communicate to them what's going on. So if you seclude yourself and don't tell nobody nothing, then won't nobody know, can't nobody help you. So you have to communicate to the people in your circle what's going on um, in order to, you know, make, a, make, make it work. And if nobody's communicating, then that doesn't work. So you wanna make sure you have mature people around you that can communicate because otherwise it causes friction. So communicate. What are your couple goals slash plans career and personal development wise for 2018? Oh, that's on my iPad. Uh, we made a list. I have a whole video we'll, of the goals we'll come that I together. Have. Yes, you made a whole video, so go check that out. Link in the description. Huh. Um, <laughs> uh, so some of the things that I said was I wanted to be a better steward over all the things that I have uh, dominion over or control uh, of. So I want to be a better steward of my time. I want to be a better steward of the ministry. I want to be a better steward of my home. I want to be a better steward of my finances major key is finances um i want to get out of debt by the end of the year mm -hmm. um it may seem like a tall task but i want to get out of debt because i got like petty debt you know <laughs> <laughs> and petty debt is debt that you have when you had lacked discipline in a season of your life because all it takes is just a season i'm not gonna preach so don't um, preach now and being a better steward like it covered like a multitude of the things that i wanted to do um i want to be more engaged with um, you know, uh, my brand and all of the things that um, come with, you know, Cameron James Logan. So uh, whether that's music, whether that's teaching and preaching, whether that's imparting into young people um, with youth ministry and other events, whether that's, you know, uh, photography for my wife, um, whether that's, you know, just stepping up my game uh, visuals and visually um, and creating a area or a space creative space a website where folks can come and experience all of that um and then i said i definitely wanted to spend more time with my wife i want to go on some better dates um dinner and movie is cool but i want to do some other things you know i want to explore the world i want to travel and i want to have a good time with my baby so you know what i'm saying just keep a fresh cut and you all right with me girl my personal goals i have i have a video for that but I do, as a couple, do want to like be better stewards of what we have. Like I feel like our house has just been like trash lately. I mean, there's stuff that needs to be fixed. I definitely want to like renovate the house some more. Um, I definitely want to be better about keeping everything in our house neat and just being more organized because we're very unorganized. I feel like when we moved here, we moved here too quick. Everything just kind of we threw it in here, and, and it's just been thrown in here for like a year. So we trying to clean house. We've been trying to clean house. Um, so just being a better, you know, just being better about what we have because we can't get anything better than this if we don't take care of what we all Come on, somebody. Got. You want so. God to bless you in an area that you're not even skilled at because the thing that you consider a blessing before you're ready is a curse. Come on, so you are about to hit the fourth year of your marriage. If your fourth year had a theme, what would the title of your fourth year be? Uh, hold on. Chill. And then what do you learn about this year about each other that's different than any other year? Yeah, what did we learn in so, 2017? So, so, in 2017, um, we we got super close. Um, we did. We got super close from some of the things that were going on around us and some of the things that uh, were going on within our home uh, personally. And, you know, it just drew us closer to each other and it drew us closer to God. Uh, we experienced, you know, a miracle and a breakthrough for some of our friends. And then we also experienced some heartache uh, yep. with, with some of our friends as well. And then we've been going through some things personally in our own uh, lives as a family and as a unit. We started talking more and we look like, look, you know, we started setting stuff in stone. Like, look, this ain't going to happen. We not doing this and we going to pray. And uh, so that's that's one thing that I'll say that we learned about each other. And I'll say um, this is the year of victory. Victory this year. This is our victory year. This okay. is what God told me at the beginning of the year. Every year, God tells me uh, what the theme of the year will be. And last year, at the beginning of the year, he said it was going to be a year of battle. And in order for you to get the victory, you had to go through some battles. And last year was some definitely battles. a battle. You did. But last year was a really good, I always say that last year was a really good year for me, even though it was tough, it was a really good year because I felt like I grew, I grew so much. 
And I think because we were so vulnerable and open with each other, because we had to talk about stuff, it kind of like set us up to be like stronger. At the beginning there, I was like, yo, like if y'all can tell I'm glowing, it's because like I was getting so, like all my strength, like you know how like with superheroes, like when they get their powers and then they just start blowing up everything. That was, that was, yup, my metamorphosis. I became a metahuman last year. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, last year we, we really grew close. So this year we're just gonna be unstoppable because we have these new powers now. So now that we know how to use our powers, we can use them. And I mean, I'm trying to talk and Cameron is recording me and this is hecka awkward. Can you stop? Yeah, I just feel like we got in so much closer and we really can take the world by storm now. And I just, I don't know, like, I just, I just really like, love you. Love you too. That was such a Jonathan moment. Yeah, it was. <laughs> my, my little brother does that. He's like, I just love you. Four years is crazy that, that we've crazy. been, we've been married that long. We've been together. Uh, we've known each other since 2010. Seven years. And we've been dating since. Seven years. Since Seems like forever. And uh, I couldn't I couldn't ask for a better destiny partner. Couldn't ask for a better wife, a better spouse, a better someone to support me and you know hold me down when when, uh, when things are are tough. Um, she's always here to hold me down. Um, when I feel like you know I'm supposed to be doing everything uh, that I possibly can to make things right, she's like, babe. You know I'm I'm here I got to help. You. That's one of the things that I still struggle with today. She's always like, you know, I'm, I want to help as much as I can, and I'm like, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. Um, so uh, that's I'm still working on that. And I'm working on easing up on having it because I feel like I always have to have things together and and figure it out. And when I can't figure it out, I get frustrated and beat myself up. But it's okay to ask for help. Yeah. Uh, and I will say, you know what? I I really, um, in ways that I've grown, I really feel like. Uh, there's just a, another level of confidence that I have in myself That's what I was trying and to in say. God. It's one thing for people to say that they can see you growing in God, but it's another thing when your wife or your, you know, when you come home, because that's your first ministry. If, if my wife think I'm whack and I'm up there preaching, then I'm whack. It don't matter what nobody else say, I'm whack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if my wife is proud of what I'm doing, if my family is proud of what I'm doing, you know, my parents, her parents, her family, my family, if they're proud of what I'm doing, then that means I'm actually doing something and I'm making God proud. So uh, I've just been more confident. I've just been, you know, being a better uh, student of the word. And I can't wait to preach tomorrow as well. I'm just excited, man. I'm excited for this year. Scoochie. Thank you guys for supporting us as you always do. Um, we're looking to turn it up a notch, man. If you guys can, you know, really just continue to show up and show out on how you guys support us, uh, you know, some great things will begin to happen. That's it, Q&A 2018. Cheers to year five. Let's get it. Let's get it. Peace.